hello there grade 7 students. So we are now on our last quarter for grade 7 mathematics which is quarter 4. So previously on the third quarter, uh, you have learned about uh, topics on geometry. So for this quarter, so another branch of mathematics will be discussed which is statistics. So before we proceed to everything about uh, statistics or so lessons about statistics, we will first define uh, the terms that are related to statistics, what is the importance of statistics, and where can we apply statistics. So let's start. So for the lesson objective, we will define statistics, its application and importance, and the terms related to it. Okay, so again, yung statistics po, Another branch po siya ng mathematics, just like algebra, measurement, uh, geometry. So, statistics is also a branch of mathematics. So, i-discuss natin kung saan na-apply ang statistics. Some, uh, some how, um, may iba sa atin na hindi tayo aware na application pala yun ng statistics. So, almost every day kasi na-apply natin ng mathematics as well as, siyempre, statistics. So, napapanood natin yan, nakikita natin yan, nababasa natin yan. So, kung ano yung mga uh, terms related sa statistics, i-discuss ko rin po. Now, let us start our discussion by defining what is, is statistics. So, what is statistics? So, statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data to come up with a useful and meaningful information. So, so kung yung uh, geometry, it has something to do with uh, uh, measurement of sizes, shapes, and so, dito naman sa statistics, ang concern niya is yung collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data. Okay, so ang focus natin dito is yung data. So, paano ba tayo nagko-collect ng mga data? Okay, so di ba may mga iba't ibang methods tayong ginagamit para mag-collect ng data? Like for example, yung interview, ayan, yung, uh, yung mga uh, opinion ng mga tao, ayan. So, meron din naman tayong survey. And then, organizing and presenting. So, organizing and presenting, tandem yung dalawa na yan. So, organizing and presenting, dito natin uh, ginagamit yung mga uh, tabular and graphical uh, presentation ng mga data. So, syempre, may mga ways kung paano natin pinepresent at paano inoorganize yung data pa para mas maging clear, para maging mas informed tayo dun sa data na yun. And then, also, Aside from that, we also analyze the data. Okay, so syempre, para magkaroon tayo ng conclusions, ng generalizations, ng opinions, ayan, kailangan din natin syempre i-analyze yung data. So, kailangan natin i-analyze yan para at least maging sure tayo kung ano man ang gusto nating uh, patunayan o kung ano man ang gusto nating uh, malaman. And then, after that, analyze natin, i-interpret natin yun. Syempre, Bago, uh, after natin i-analyze, bago uh, after natin pag-aralan yung data, tsaka natin i-interpret kung anong meron dun sa data na yun. Okay, so minsan kasi hindi natin alam na statistics na pala yun. So, statistics, uh, present yan sa ating uh, daily living. Like for example, sa weather forecast, ayan, sa yung paggalaw ng piso, tsaka ng dolyar, ayan yung ano pa, yung effects ng drugs and medicines, ayan, statistics lahat po yan. So, at marami pang iba. So, let us now proceed to the application in importance of statistics. So, statistics is being used in most areas of our daily living. So, hindi tayo aware na ah, statistics pala yung uh, situation na yon kung meron doon. So, uh, these uh, situations involves weather forecasts. Okay, so, madalas nating napapanood yan sa TV, di ba? Sa 24 oras, like for example, si Mang Tani. So, ang 
ang kanyang uh, binabalita lagi kung ano ang magiging panahon, kung magiging maganda ba, magiging masama, kung uulan ba, kung aaraw ba, ano ba yung chance na uulan, o kaya naman ano yung chance na kukulog, kukulog o kaya kikidlat. So, those are uh, related to weather forecast. And weather forecast has something to do with statistics as well as yung effectiveness of drugs and medicines. So, ngayon napapanahon yung ating COVID-19 vaccines, di ba? So, before before naman uh, uh, in-apply or in-inject sa mga, sa mga tao yung COVID-19 vaccines, nagkaroon muna siyempre ng series of tests. So, fourth part kasi ng uh, statistics yan is yung uh, kailangan munang uh, i-analyze kung ano yung magiging epekto ng mga yan, yung drugs and medicines sa katawan ng tao. So, hindi basta-basta uh, ituturo or i-inject yung COVID-19 vaccines nang walang test na nagaganap. And then, as well as sa business profit. So, yung kita natin sa mga business. So, may mga araw na yung makita na kita sa business ay mababa, meron naman yung araw na mataas yung kita, and then as well as yung number of births. So, ilan ba yung mga uh, bata or mga sanggol na isinisilang sa isang araw, sa dalawang araw, sa isang linggo, ayan. So, minimeasure din po yung mga yan sa statistics, as well as yung quality check of products. Okay. So, yung mga products na ginagamit natin, kinoconsume natin, so, di ba, kaya lang din ng COVID-19 vaccine. So, hindi yan ipoproduce sa market unless hindi yan, uh, hindi yan dumaan sa quality check. Okay. So, baka kasi may mga uh, elements, may, may ingredients na uh, hindi maganda sa ating katawan kung gagamitin natin. And then, as well as, isa pa to, yung predictions on presidential and senatorial elections. So, kapag panahon ng elections, madalas nating uh, naririnig sa balita yung Pulse Asia, ayan, na kung saan nagkakandak sila ng uh, survey. Kung saan, kung sino sa mga, sa mga tao, sa mga uh, individual na umahabol sa ganitong posisyon ang nakakaangat hali naman ang pang ang hindi okay so napi-predict din po yan ng statistics and then as well as yung trends sa technology okay so ayan since nasa modern technology na kasi tayo so na nasa modern world na tayo so kumbaga yung uh, <clears throat> yung technology pa bago-bago siya so halimbawa ngayon may iPhone 12 maya-maya may iPhone 13 na Okay, so kumbaga, hindi natin uh, napipigilan yung pag, uh, pag-usbong ng technology. So, kaya nga trends, maaring uh, yung uso ngayon, hindi na siya uso sa kinabukasan o maaring yung uso dati, ibabalik ulit. So, ayan po yung mga applications and yung importance ng statistics, ayan. So, nakapaloob na rin dyan. So, mahalaga na pag-aralan natin yung statistics it's because ah, makakatulong po yan sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. So, let us have branch of statistics. So, yung pinakaunang branch ng statistics is the descriptive statistics. So, ano nga ba ang meron sa descriptive statistics? So, descriptive statistics is used to describe and summarize collected sample data. So, yung root word ng descriptive is describe. So, ayan. So, kumbaga, uh, ine-explain, pinapaliwanag natin kung anong meron dun sa mga data, sa mga sample data na nakolekta natin. Like, for example, uh, yung mga survey na kinokondak. Diba? So, dinidescribe natin kung uh, limbawa dun sa mga presidential election, uh, presidential uh, bet. Ayan, so kung sino ba yung mga nanguna, sino yung pangalawa, sino yung pangatlo, sino yung angat sa survey, sino naman yung hindi angat. Okay, so ayan. Ano pa? This data can be shown using graphical and tabular representations. So yung mga na-collect nating data, pwede po natin yung i-present using graphical and tabular representations. 
So, ano nga ba ang pinakaiba ng graphical in tabular representations? Kapag graphical po, ito po yung uh, makikita natin yung mga graphs like line graph, bar graph, circle graph, o yung tinatawag natin pie graph, and then picture graph. Kapag tabular representations naman, it's more on table. Okay, so tables po ang ating mga uh, nakikita under tabular representations. So, those are categorized under descriptive statistics. So, usually kapag graphical and tabular representations, ang mga nakikita natin dyan yung mga numerical data. Okay. So, types of descriptive statistics includes frequency distribution, central tendency, and variability. So, yung mga types of descriptive statistics na yan, so, yan po ang ating mga lesson sa susunod ng mga linggo from week 3 up to week 7 or up to the last uh, week of quarter 4. So, i-discuss lahat natin yan. So, unang-una na dyan is yung frequency distribution and then pangalawa yung central tendency tsaka yung variability. So, kung ano yung mga pinagkakaiba-iba ng mga uh, topics na yan, so, i-discuss ko po yan lahat sa ating mga susunod na video lessons. So, these are examples of graphical representation of data. So, kanina nasabi ko na yung mga graph, types of graphs na pwede natin gamitin sa pag-present ng mga data. So, ngayon, ipipresent ko po sa inyo yung mga uh, graphs na yan. So, ayan, meron tayong tinatawag na ogive, histogram, dot plot, circle pie graph, relative frequency histogram, stem lip display, and then bar graph. So, those are what we call graphical representations. So, yung mga graphical representations na yan, so, yun po yung ating i-discuss niyan sa uh, fourth week. Okay, so, kung saan yung topics natin is uh, organizing data. Okay, and presenting data. Okay, so, makikilala niyo po yung mga graphs na yan. So, separate uh, video lessons po yung mga Uh, types of graphs na yan para mas maintindihan po ninyo. So, next we have tabular representation of data. So, dito po ang pinaka uh, main tool na ginagamit natin to represent data is using tables. So, yung tinatawag natin frequency distribution table. So, ayan. So, yan, yan ang example ng frequency distribution table. So, kung hindi ko man yan may discuss uh, Uh, further dito sa ating video lesson, don't worry. So, meron tayong separate video lesson dyan on the third week uh, na lesson yon sa grade 7 mathematics. So, mapag-aaralan nyo on how to organize data using a frequency distribution table. So, another type of statistics is The inferential or the inferential statistics. So, inferential statistics is used to analyze sample data which leads to inferences, generalization, conclusion, and decision of the population data. So, we have there the word sample and then population. So, by the way, so review lang natin kayo sa sample and population. So, sample, ito po yung subset ng population ng kabuuan. So, yung population yung kabuuan. Okay, like for example, nakakaroon ng survey, halimbawa, dun sa, halimbawa, sa parating na election na yan. So, siyempre na tinitignan kung sino ba yung mga presidential uh, bet, yung mga nakunguna sa mga survey-survey. Okay, so siyempre, hindi naman kailangan tanungin lahat ng mga tao dito sa Pilipinas. So, kumukuha lang ng sample. Okay, like for example, 1,000 people, yung kanilang sinurvey, yung kanilang tinanong. And then from from the results of the uh, sample data na in survey na ginawa nila dun sa mga samples na yan, 1000 samples. Kukuha sila ngayon ng mga tinatawag nating mga inferences, generalization and then conclusion. So dun sila magbe-base kung paano nila ilalabas, ipepresent yung naging data. Okay. So halimbawa, meron din naman uh, ngayon, 'di ba, yung bago uh, pinagamit or nagpabakuna ang mga tao dun sa COVID-19 vaccine, di ba? So, hindi naman basta-basta uh, ginawa yung vaccine na yun and then i-inject sa mga tao. Siyempre, nagkaroon muna yun ng mga series of tests. 
Okay, so kumbaga, meron muna silang sample na ginamit and then uh, once na okay naman yung sample, ayun, ah, uh, nila ah, uh, sila magkakaroon ng conclusion, ng decision kung alin ba dun sa mga vaccine, vaccines na yun ang uh, mas mataas yung ano, yung uh, level of efficiency. Okay, so alin ba dun yung di ba, alin, alin dun yung gamot na mas Uh, makakapag uh, lesson ng risk ng uh, COVID-19. Okay, so and then another one is hypothesis testing. So, isang uh, common na ginagamit sa inferential statistics is yung uh, hypothesis testing. Okay, like for example, so si teacher halimbawa, nakakaroon siya ng uh, experiment. Okay, so alimbawa, si class A, so habang nagdi-discuss si teacher, gumamit siya ng TV. So, TV-based instruction siya. And then, yung class B naman is yung traditional lang. Okay, so lecture discussion lang. And then, after niyang uh, ituro yung lesson na yun, dun sa dalawang klase na yun, class A and class B, magbibigay siya ng exam. Okay, so pareho yung ibibigay niyang exam dun sa mga students. Pareho din yung lesson na kanyang ipepresent. And then, nais niyang malaman kung nakakaroon ba ng significant difference. May pagkakaiba ba dun sa mga students from class A na ginamitan niya ng TV-based instruction. And then, yung sa class B naman na traditional way of teaching lang ginamit niya. Okay, so yan po yung isa sa mga uh, pwede nating uh, gamitin for inferential statistics, yung hypothesis testing. So, hypothesis, dinidefine natin niya as an educated guess. Okay? So, next naman, we have population, census, and sample. So, ano ang pinagkaka pinagkakaiba ng mga terms na yan? Like, for example, yung population and sample. So, when we say population, this refers to the set of all the data in a study. So, we have there the word all. Ibig sabihin, lahat. Yung kabuuan. And then, census is a collection of data in a population. Okay, so, yung census, so kung aware kayo, di ba, may mga tao, may mga workers na kadalasan pumupunta sa bahay natin and then ini-interview yung ating mga parents. So, that is what we call census. So, ano ang main purpose ng census? Siyempre, to collect data. Okay. So, ano ang mga kinokollect? So, usually kung ilan yung uh, members ng family, kung ano yung trabaho, ano yung natapos, yung mga personal information. Kasi kasala, ka, kailangan yun ng Philippine Statistics Authority. So, kumbaga, Uh, nagkakaroon ng mga uh, uh, collection of data para yung mga data, yung may existing data is ma-update. Okay, so, so, and then, after nilang mag-interview, kadalasan meron silang dinidikit sa pinto, ba diba? So, and then, meron silang date kung hanggang sa hanggang kailan effective yung uh, naging census na yon And then, Uh, we, ha we also have sample. So, sample are drawn from the population. Okay, so, population, ito nga yung kabuan. So, kapag sample, uh, part lang siya nung population. Like, for example, consider this figure. So, on the left side, as you can see, meron tayo dyan population. So, ayan, yung nasa malaking bilog. Ayan, ayan ang kabuang populasyon. Halimbawa, ang isang group. And then, kapag sinapi nating sample, so, out of this population, kukuha lang tayo ng iilan. Okay, so, sample, iilan lang yun. Siyempre, hindi yon magiging equal sa population. Kap kasi, kapag ang isang group, kinuha mo lahat yon na magiging uh, participant ng gagawing study, hindi na yon sample kasi kinuha mo na lahat. So, that is what we call population na. So, like for example, dyan, ang daming... Uh, tao, individual dito sa population pero ang kinuhang sample lang ay lima lang. Okay, so sample lang. Halimbawa, sa mga nagsasurvey nga, so, di ba, ang population ng Pilipinas is almost 
uh, is more than 100 million. Okay, so, halimbawa, kung isa-survey ang mga tao, kung sino yung uh, sa tingin nila sa kanila na gusto nilang maging presidente, maging susunod na present, presidente. So, hindi naman lahat ng mga uh, 100 plus million na Pilipino ay tatanungin nila. So, kukuha lang sila ng sample. Like, for example, 1,000 lang. And then, from those uh, samples, uh, magpre-predict sila. Siyempre, doon pa lang, makikita nila kung sino nga ba sa mga gustong humabol ang nangunguna sa survey. Okay, so, yun po yung uh, pinakaiba ng population in sample. Next, we also have sampling techniques. Okay, so, ayan. Yung unang-una dyan is random sampling. So, yung sampling techniques na yan, like for example, nagkakaroon ng survey sa, alimbawa sa isang klase, and then lima lang ang kukunin. So, may mga techniques, sa mga sampling techniques na ginagamit para at least magkaroon ng uh, enough uh, participant para dun sa gagawing study. So, unang-una na dyan, yung very common natin is the random sampling. So, random sampling, every member of a population has an equal chance of being selected as a sample. So, kapag random sampling, so, hindi siya bias. Ibig sabihin, uh, lahat ng mga members ng isang group ay may chance na maging uh, sample. Like, for example, yung class na 40. So, alimbawa, kukuha ng sample na 20. Okay, so, so yung 40 na yon lahat sila may chance na uh, mapili as sample. Pero, at the end of the day, so, hindi lahat sila makukuha. Kasi nga, 20 lang out of 40 yung kukunin. Pero lahat sila, meron silang equal chance. So, walang nakakaangat kahit isa sa kanila. Next, we also have convenient sampling. So, samples are selected based from the preference of the researcher. So, ang pinagkaiba ng random sampling and convenient sampling, so kapag convenient sampling, malaya na pumili ang isang researcher kung sino man ang kanyang uh, samples or participant na uh, kukunin para maging participants dun sa kanyang gagawing study. So, kumbaga, uh, magiging bias siya. So, kung sino yung sa tingin niya na akma dun sa kanyang study, yun ang kanyang kukunin. Like, for example, uh, kung nagkukunda ka ng study, uh, alimbawa sa town A, so, mas malayo ang town, town B sa town A, pero, ang kukunin mo is yung malapit, syempre. So, mas malapit yung town A sa'yo kesa dun sa town B. So, ang kukunin mong samples dun sa town A. Kumbaga, nagiging bias ka. So, namimili ka kung alin yung mag mas convenient sa'yo, mas comfortable ka, at hindi ka mahihirapan. And then, we also have stratified random sampling. So, population is divided into subgroups called strata. So, the members of each subgroup shared common uh, characteristics. So, kapag stratified random sampling, so sa isang population, so kumbaga, kinakategorize ng isang researcher kung anong meron dun sa mga groups. Like, for example, uh, kung sa isang population, sa buong population, meron siya yung uh, age 12 to 15. Ayan, so lahat, lahat ng students or individuals na edad 12 to 15, isang group sila. And then, yung mga edad 16 to uh, 19, ganun. So, isang group lang din sila. Then, meron din naman silang, uh, pwede rin naman dun sa population. So, lahat ng girls magkakasama. Lahat ng boys magkakasama. Kaya naman, lahat ng nasa town A magkakasama. Lahat ng sa town B magkakasama. Okay, so, kumbaga, uh, dun sa mga groups na yon meron silang common characteristics. Kaya sila pinagsasama. So, we also have cluster sampling. So, the population is divided into clusters, such as schools, and then randomly choose the samples from this cluster. Like, for example, sa Pampanga, sa so Division of Pampanga, so public schools. So, meron tayong, uh, meron kaming uh, seven clusters na binubuo ng mga municipalities dito sa Pampanga. So, kumbaga, 
lahat ng mga municipalities na magkakatabi, so, pinagsama sila. Like, for example, sa aming case, so, sa cluster namin, so, dalawang municipality kami, yung Candaba and San Luis. So, lahat ng mga schools ng Candaba and San Luis, so, iisang cluster po sila. So, kung pipili ang isang researcher ng uh, samples niya using cluster sampling, syempre, pipiliin niya per clusters. Okay, like for examples, uh, like for example, so cluster 5, so lahat ng mga schools nun, pwede niyang piliin as samples. Or pwede rin naman sa isang municipality, ayan, lahat ng San Luis schools, salimbawa, ayan, so lahat sila, uh, samples, consider, pwede sila maging uh, samples or maging participants dun sa study. Okay. And then, we also have systematic sampling. So, samples are obtained using an ordered list of the population. The selection of members is done systematically. So, from the word systematic, so, merong sistema sinusundan. Like, for example, yung uh, population, so, hinahati ng male and female. Okay. And then, ang gagawin ni researcher or ng isang taong nagre-research is uh, i-organize niya, uh, i-arrange niya yung kanyang mga po, yung population or yung kanyang uh, gagamiting uh, mga students or individuals sa kanyang study. So, ikakategorize na lahat ng male and then lahat ng female. And then, meron siyang uh, system na susundan like for example uh, every PIP uh, PIP student okay so kapag uh, ina inarrange niya na yung mga students male and female kada lima daw don ang magiging sample sa kanyang study okay like for example kung yung number ng male ay 20 halimbawa and then, ang kukunin niyang sample is every, halimbawa, every fourth student. So, ayan. Magbibilang siya nun from 1. And then, maghihinto siya kapag naka-4 na siya. Ibig sabihin, yung pang-apat na student, student consider siya ang sample. Ano pa? Yung pang-8, yung pang-12, pang-16, and pang-20. So, kung ilan man yung population nung uh, isang klase. Okay, so yun po yung systematic sampling. Now, what is a data? So, kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan, what is a data? So, data are units of information, usually numerical, that are collected through observations. So, there are types of data, includes which includes quantitative and qualitative data. So, usually kasi yung mga collect na data dyan is... Uh, numerical, ibig sabihin numbers. Okay, like for example, uh, ilan ang senior citizens sa subdivision na ganito, sa barangay na ganito. So, syempre, numerical yun. Okay, so, meron tayong types of data, yung quantitative nga and qualitative. So, kung anong pinagkaiba ng quantitative and qualitative? So, when we say quantitative data, so, it composed of numbers representing counts and measurements. So, quantity. So, quantitative. So, kapag quantitative, ang pinag-uusapan natin dyan is basically numbers. Yung may mga bilang, yung may, may mga sukat. Okay. So, examples of quantitative data na pwede natin i-collect. So, general average of students. Ayan. So, general average, grades yan, numerical yan. Like, for example, 87, 88, 91, 95. So, those are uh, numbers. And then, we also have years in teaching service. So, kapag years in teaching service, syempre, meron mga uh, nakapag-render na ng 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Ayan. Again, numbers pa rin yun. And then, we also have annual income of an employee. So, since income ang pinag-uusapan natin, we are talking about money. And money are numbers. So, quantitative data po yung mga yan. So, basta ang focus ng data is about numbers, measurements, bilang. So, quantitative po yan. 
and then students studying hours. Okay, so kung ilang oras nag-aaral ang isang students. Halimbawa, limang oras, anim na oras, tatlong oras. So again, numbers pa rin yan. So kaya considered sila as quantitative data. And then, population growth rate. So kung tumaas ba yung population sa uh, lugar na ito, kung bumaba, tumaas. So again, growth rate number pa rin yun. So, maaring tumaas ng 2%, bumaba ng 10%. Again, 2%, 10%, those are numbers, measurements. Those are considered as quantitative data. On the other hand, qualitative data, so are divided into distinct categories that are distinguished by some non-numeric characteristics. So, Kung quantitative, we use numbers or that counts and measurements. So, dito naman po, non-numeric. So, ibig sabihin, walang numbers. So, hindi natin kailangan yung numbers when we are talking about qualitative data. So, examples of qualitative data para mas maintindihan nyo yung difference between quantitative and qualitative. So, basta yung pinaka-main difference niya, kapag quantitative numbers, qualitative uh, usually mga words yung ating mga ginagamit dyan. Non-numeric. So, we also have civil status. Okay, so yung civil status, like for example, single, married, widowed, uh, divorced, separated. So, hindi po yan kinakailangan ng bilang. Okay? What else? Highest educational attainment. So, highest educational attainment, kung ano ba ang natapos ng isang tao, Hanggang elementary ba? High school? College? Under, uh, postgraduate? So, ayan, hindi po yan ginagamitan ng numbers. Skin color. Okay, kung meron bang fair complexion, brown, white, black. Okay, so again, maranin po yung numbers. And then, degree of hotness and coldness. Very cold, very hot. Ayan, so again, wala rin po yung uh, Numbers. So, pero kung temperature ang pinag-uusapan natin, of course, in degree Celsius, Fahrenheit. So, numbers po yun. And there, there are types of quantitative data. So, may mga uri ng quantitative data. Number one, discrete data. So, discrete data is a count that involves finite number of possible values. Okay, finite. Sabihin, nabibilang. Okay? So, examples of discrete data are number of students in a school, number of languages in the world, number of teachers in the Philippines, and sizes of shoes. So, kapag discrete data, ito po yung mga data na pwede natin bilangin. Of course, may mga data na hindi natin, po, hindi natin posibleng mabilang. Okay. So, number of students in a school. Okay. So, kahit maraming students sa school, Pwede pa rin po nating bilangin kung ilan ang mga students. Number of languages in the world. Kahit maraming bansa sa buong mundo, pwede pa rin po nating ma-determine kung ilan ang mga language na ginagamit. And then, number of teachers in the Philippines. Again, ganun pa rin. Pwede nating bilangin kung ilan yung mga teachers from elementary, secondary, college. And then, sizes of shoes. Nabibilang din po yan. So, there, uh, the second type of quantitative data is what we call the continuous data. So, it is a data that can take any value within a range. So, examples of continuous data are student's height, dog's weight, and classroom temperature. So, in student's height natin, syempre, continuous ang paglaki ng student. Ganun din yung uh, bigat ng isang dog. And then, yung classroom temperature... Uh, maaring bumababa yan, maaring tumataas yung temperature na yan. So, continuous po yan. So, unlike yung discrete data, so, nabibilang natin. Okay, so, hindi siya continuous. The, there is another way to classify data using four levels of measurement. So, yung pinaka uh, mababang level is what we call the nominal level of measurement. So, what is this? Uh measurement. So, in this level of measurement, we can use words, letters, and alphanumeric symbols. 
So, ayan, words, letters, and alphanumeric symbols, examples of nominal data. So, ayan, blood type. So, kapag blood type yung pinag-uusapan natin, usually letters ang nandyan. Like, for example, A, B, O, A, B. Ayan, yan yung mga blood types na possible na magkaroon ang isang tao. So, siyempre, sa isang tao, isa lang ang kanyang blood type. So, zip code. Ayan. So, kadalasan nating nakikita yung zip code na yan sa mga information na pinifill out natin, lalo na yung mga personal information. So, alimbawa sa amin, sa San Luis, ang zip code namin is 2014. Next, we also have gender. So, kapag gender, categorize lang yan as male, female. And then, political party. Okay, so, a political party. Halimbawa, dito sa Pilipinas, meron tayong uh, liberal party, di ba? So, yung mga party, yung mga uh, grupo na kung saan kinabibilangan ng mga taong tumatakbo. Liberal party. Uh, nationalista party coalition ayan those are examples of political party in the philippines and then another one is ordinal level of measurement so in this level of measurement data are, are arranged in some particular or order so sa nominal uh, level of measurement hindi natin nirarank yung mga data like for example yung blood type hindi naman first yung A, hindi naman second yung B. So, lahat yon equal. So, hindi natin sila kailangan i-arrange. So, examples of ordinal data. Socioeconomic status. So, meron dyan yung middle class, uh, lower class. Ayan, kumbaga, yung mahirap, yung nasa gitna lang, yung mayaman, sobrang yaman. O, those are socioeconomic status. And then, level of education. Okay, so, level. Okay, so, kung natapos mo lang, uh, elementary, uh, college lang, uh, uh, postgraduate, ayan, naka-level po yan. So, syempre, ang mauuna, yung sa pinaka, iba ba, maaring, um, baka kindergarten lang ang natapos mo. Tapos, ang kasunod nun, elementary, tapos high school, college, uh, postgraduate, like master, master's and doctorate. Uh, so, So, yan. May level sila. And then, low level of income. Okay, syempre, di ba sa trabaho? So, naka-level yung income natin based sa position natin. So, hindi naman lahat ng empleyado ay magkakamuka, magkakapareho ng sahod. So, nakadepende po yan sa position. Like, for example, sa amin, teacher 1, teacher 2, teacher 3. So, naka-level po kami sa position. Syempre, magkakaiba yung ating aming sahod. Siyempre, yung teacher 1, mas mababa siya kesa sa teacher 2 and teacher 3, and so on. And then, customer's level of satisfaction. Okay. So, halimbawa, sa isang res restaurant, okay, di ba? Nagkakaroon tayo minsan ng mga assessment. So, kung kumusta yung naging service, yung kumusta yung pagkain, so, meron doon uh, satisfied, very satisfied, not satisfied. Those are level of satisfaction. Okay, so, ayun, ordinal data yun. Nakarang sila. Siyempre, kapag very satisfied ka, ibig sabihin maganda ang service doon sa uh, restaurant na yun. Siyempre, kapag not satisfied ka, meron kang hinahanap, meron kang hindi nagustuhan, hindi ka satisfied. And then, we also have interval level of measurement. So, it is like an ordinal level but with meaningful amount of differences between data can be determined. Zero does not represent an absence of something in an interval scale. So, examples of interval data. Ayan. Temperature. Okay. And then, IQ test. Interval. Like, for example... Diba sa uh, IQ test, meron tayong tinatawag na above average. Ayan. 
Meron din namang average, needs improvement, fair, mga ganun. So, meron silang interval, particular inter interval na kung saan kinaklasify yung mga students o yung mga individuals na nagtitake ng IQ test. So, sa temperature naman, syempre, di ba? Uh, meron ding interval dyan. Okay, so, alimbawa, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. So, interval, may mga range. So, and then, uh, dito sa temperature na yan, meron tayong negative dyan. Like, for example, neg yung temperature, negative 10 degrees Celsius. May mga ganyan. And then, sa ratio level of measurement naman, so, it is exactly the same as interval, except that zero on the scale means does not exist. Okay. Examples of ratio data. Weight, area, okay, speed and velocity. So, those are examples of ratio data. So, dun sa uh, interval data, uh, uh, hindi usually dun ginagamit yung zero. Hindi siya uh, uh, evident. So, dito naman, yung zero, uh, nag -e exist siya. So, like for example, kung nasa outer space tayo, weightless tayo. And then, ano pa? Kapag yung distance, ayan, di ba? Meron tayong, yung speed natin is zero at rest. Ibig sabihin, hindi gumagalaw. So, zero yon. So, after discussing with you the introduction to statistics, so our next lesson has something to do with methods of gathering statistical data. So, after natin uh, discuss lahat ng mga terms, mga important terms, mga basic terms on statistics, so, i-discuss naman natin kung paano ang paraan ng pag-collect, ng pag-gather ng mga data. So, sana may natutunan kayo dito sa ating video lesson. So, that's all. Thank you.